And welcome back, everybody, to more of Drag... You know, I I know I specifically set that to uh, no screenshot button now. Oh, what can you do, you know? Oh, yes, I know what we can do. We can talk. Yes. What do you know of this place? Lothering? I think it started as a settlement by the river, and then grew when it became the place where two roads met. There are always people in Lothering, but many are just passing through. Let's talk about something else. Yes. I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. This vision of yours. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. You dreamed of the blight. I suppose I did. That was what the darkness was, no? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. And this made you want to help me? In my dream, I fell, or, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the blight devours everything? I suppose I couldn't sit by either. That is why you're a Grey Warden. Come, there's a blight to stop. And finally... Why are we stopping? Uh, we're working together. I think I should get to know you. There are dark spawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? I need to know if I can trust you at my back. I am Kunari. I have given my word to aid you. We are not people of idle promises. I've never seen a Kunari before. Tell me about your people. No. Uh, please? People are not simple. They cannot be summarized for easy reference in the manner of the elves are a lithe, pointy-eared people who excel at poverty. You said you were in the army. I am. <laughs> Have you fought in a war? I have always fought in war, Dwarf. What do you mean by that? My people have been at war since the moment we set foot in the Northern Islands. So the Canari didn't come from the islands? We do now. <laughs> Where did you come from before? Somewhere else. You see. A little more specific? No. I was born in Saharan. Of the land we came from, I know nothing, not even its name. I do not see how this matters. Saharan and Parvolan are distant. Ferelden and the Darkspawn are immediate. Are you all right? You're in that cage for weeks. You are concerned. No need. I am fit enough to fight. We should get moving. As you wish. Well, and there's puppies, too. Oh, why the whimper? Oh, pet Fenelco. Oh. <laughs> why are you whining? You've done well. You're a good dog. Oh. 
Love the doggy. Really wish I had a dog. <laughs> and I'm just not a cat person. Let him take notice and shine upon thee, for thou hast done his work this day. And the stars stood still, the winds did quiet, and all animals of earth and air held their breath. All was silent in prayer and thanks. All right. I think we have finally finished up authoring. What items did we get? Any? Not sure what item I received. Um, there's this merchant. <laughs> don't suppose you're looking to buy something. I am indeed. All right, just don't buy everything up. Did you have? Oh, wine. Yeah, so you've got a lot more stuff. Let's look at a den. Wow, this is kind of expensive stuff, though. Oh, but he's got... He's got a pretty good armor on. Yeah, he does actually have fairly good armor on. You know what, I guess we'll be alright. Let's, uh... Let's make our way... To freedom and new adventures. I wonder if something weird in my Steam happened too, because I thought I turned off a lot of this stuff, but, well, no matter. What skills yeah. are you using? Oh, you're using... S oh, the Song of Valor. Right, right, right. Yes, I do know about that. And moving on. You must gather your party before venturing forth. dreams, huh? It seems so real. Well, it is real, sort of. You see, part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Darkspawn. That's what your dream was, hearing them. The Archdemon, it talks to the Horde, and we feel it just as they do. That's why we know this is really a blight. The Archdemon. Is that the dragon? I don't know if it's really a dragon, but it sure looks like one. But yes, that's the Archdemon. It takes a bit, but eventually you can block the dreams out. Some of the older Grey Wardens say they can understand the Archdemon a bit, but I sure can't. Anyhow, when I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. Thank you, Alistair. Appreciate it. That's what I'm here for. To deliver unpleasant news and witty one-liners. Anyhow, you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. Enchantment? Ah, it's good to see you, my timely rescuer. Bodon Fennec, at your service, once again. 
Demon has come down with some deadly that you made the last time we what? met. <laughs> is there anywhere safer for a poor merchant and his son to sleep? I think not. I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? Yes? Uh, what are you selling exactly? Anything, everything, but all of the finest quality. No cheap trinkets here. And my boy Sandal happens to be a bit of a hand with enchantments. Oh, yes. Sadly, it also makes us a target for bandits and the like. If there were spare hands to hire as guards, I would have done so long ago. Have you been following us? Following you? I'm not even certain where you're going, my friend. And quite frankly, it's none of my business. Trust me when I say that my encountering you here was serendipity and nothing more. I travel a lot, so I'm bound to meet everyone on the road eventually. If you prefer, I'll take my boy and be on my way. But regretfully, you're the safest spot on this road, without a doubt. Uh, let me see your wares, Bowden. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected. And with your discount. Uh-huh. Blood Dragon Plate Gauntlets. Jeez. Yeah, you've got some stuff here, man. A stick. You've got a lot of... Chastity Belt. Check them out. You could just buy that for free, huh? Oh, here's your manuals. For Templar. The backpack. 50 onions. <laughs> How much money do we have? Seven? Yeah, I think we're just going to keep saving. Hello. The boy's a bit simple, but he's rather good with enchantments. One of those tranquil fellas actually called him a... What was it now? A savant. I had no idea such a thing existed. I'd like some enchanting. Enchantment! Yes. So we have... What is that? The Oath Keeper there? So what I wanted, to, I thought I saw two dexterity. No, yeah, maybe not. Well, whatever. We'll just. uh... Are you sure I can't interest you in this hat? A pair of earrings, perhaps? A cheese knife? So what's your story exactly? Well, if you're really interested, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to tell you. I'm originally from Orzammar, just as you are, I suspect. You don't have the look of a surface dwarf about you. I was a merchant there too. Merchant cast. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. Go on. So, as I said, things were going well. But good things must come to an end. One day. A noble woman came to my store. She looked around for a bit and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in a cave in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the dark spawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. Nobles, they're touchy like that. Tell me about it. <laughs> ah, yes, your brand. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Anyway, the woman, as I said, accused me of stealing the braces. Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I, I had been paying these castless thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The Lost Tigers. They're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure. Something worth a little gold. I see. 
The noble woman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me, and I didn't want to find out. Bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface first opportunity I got. Never look back. Fascinating story. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Now, is there anything the boy or I can get you? Um... You didn't mention your son in the tale. Ah, yes. I'm married to a fine woman back in Denerim, it's true. She'd give me a son if she could, but uh, that's not likely to ever be. Sandal here... I found him in the deep roads years ago. Abandoned, I think. And he was never quite right in the head. I took him in, and I brought him with me when I came here to the surface. He may not be my blood, true. But I think of him as one. We left Orzammar. That's right, boy. Maybe one day we'll see it again. Blood isn't all that important. That's how I've always felt. As long as he's happy, so am I. It's not as if I don't benefit, mind you. Turns out the boys are natural working with enchantments. He might have even been leery maddled. I never thought of that before, to be honest. Happens sometimes. He can work an enchantment into just about anything, however, given some time. Could probably open his own shop, if he knew how. Enchantment. <laughs> well, he does seem to enjoy it, at least. Have you heard any rumors? I hear tell they held a funeral in Denerim for King Caelan. The Grand Cleric called for a full day of mourning and there was a procession a mile long passing by the Brasier. It's too bad they don't have a body to properly burn. What happened to him at the hands of those creatures is unthinkable. That's what I've heard on the road anyhow. Take it for what it is. Uh, where do the goods come from? Look, we... We don't rob people, all right? We don't take things from people that need them. The things in the law's tags, what good did they do lying there? I brought them back to Orzammar, where people could look at them and remember. It's not all that different up here. There are places long abandoned by the humans everywhere. Even more now with the Darkspawn coming. What do you mean? People flee from the blight with good reason, but they forget things. Things with value and meaning. They leave them behind because they're frightened and desperate. And sometimes, my boy and I, we find our way to these places before the Horde descends, and we save these things. I take them away so the Darkspawn don't get them. I'm Is not that judging. So bad? Hey, a boom. They destroy everything they touch. I suppose it's better than having the Darkspawn take it all. That's what I tell myself, too. Ah, these are dark times indeed. Dark times, my friend. I should go. Of course. Good fortune to you and yours. Goodbye. You still have that quest on you, huh? And I think that's the quest to take us out to uh, the Warden's Keep. Yes. What were you doing in that? Uh, I have a question. I am hardly surprised. <laughs> Why did you come to Ferelden? To answer a question. What was the question? The Arishok asked, what is the blight? By his curiosity, I am now here. What's an Arishok? The one who commands the Antam, the body of the Kunari. So he's your king. Kunari have no kings. What do you have, then? Little patience for endless questions. I see. Uh, did you find the answer? A portion of it. What was it? Were you not at Ostagar when the army was overwhelmed? That is your answer. Don't you have to report back, then? Yes. When are you going to do that? Never. I cannot go home. I'm sorry. Thank you. Can we move on? We keep the dark spawn waiting. What were you doing in that cage? Sitting, as you observed. <laughs> uh, it's not what I meant. It's what you asked. You don't like me much, do you? Warden, if I truly disliked you, I would leave. 
that I am still here, you may interpret however you choose. Are you going to answer my question? I did. Parshera, was there anything else? Uh, let's go. As you wish. At least... Oh, it's my timer. So let's, um... Let's just keep talking a little bit. Are you sure I can't interest you in this hat? A pair of earrings, perhaps? I hear news from Dinnerham that Tyrn Loghain has been declared the new regent. It makes sense, his daughter being the queen. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Heard any others? I hear that Tyrn Loghain, the regent, is calling for new levies of troops. He wants to rebuild the army we lost at Astagar. Thing is, there's not a lot of spare men to be found. Out of Dragon's Peak, there's press gangs roaming around, grabbing any free man they can lay their hands on. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Of course. Good fortune to you and yours. Goodbye. I don't know what that quest you have there is, but... Allie, we haven't really talked to you. What do you need? I'd like to ask you something. Ask away. So you said Erlayman raised you. Oh, did I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. Really? Must have been tough for them. Well, they were flying dogs, you see. Surprisingly strict parents, too. And devout Andrastians to boot. Uh, that is what they say about Anders? That, and that they make a great deal of cheese. Funny, but the dogs never mention cheese. As a matter of fact, if you said cheese around them, they'd start growling. Isn't that odd? Or did I dream all of that? <laughs> Funny the dreams you'll have when you sleep on a cold, hard ground, isn't it? I dream of becoming a Grey Warden. Oh, wait. Hmm, point taken. Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard, and before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Arleman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him anymore for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. But you blamed him then, I take it? I was young and resentful and not very pious. Of course I blamed him. I remember screaming at him like a little child. Well, I was a child, so I doubt it was surprise. Arleman eventually married a young woman from Orlais, which caused all sorts of problems between him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, then you, Arlesa, resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age ten. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. Wasn't it inappropriate for the Arl to raise an orphan? Probably. It was just a kindness he did to a woman who had served him anyway. I didn't sleep on silk sheets in the keep or anything. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there, and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. You were young. And raised by dogs. Or I may as well have been, the way I acted. <laughs> yeah, but maybe all young bastards act like that. I don't know. All I know is that the Arl is a good man, and well-loved by the people. He also was King Caelan's uncle, so he has a personal motivation to see Loghain pay for what he did. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. 
Cool. What's up, puppy? You have been going crazy. Oh, what, you little... <laughs> what? What? Your furry friend here took offense at me getting near his food. He snapped at me. Look. <laughs> well, he is a war dog. Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. That'll teach me. Oh, puppy. I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed their Mabari the flesh of the vanquished. <laughs> well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. <laughs> oh, like you can tell the difference. For all you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. Oh, ho, ho. I'd never feed you another human being. It's not cannibalism if he's eating it, you know. <laughs> Love the dog. Uh, look at what your fool dog placed in my pack. <laughs> a putrid, half-eaten hair is not something a woman wants to find in her unmentionables. Oh. It's the thought that counts. He means well. Dirty mongrel can have this back. There. And tell him not to do it again. It was a gift. You can't just throw it away like that. I just did. Oh. I don't want it, you worthless fur bag. Oh ho ho. I think you hurt his feelings. Oh, he's just trying to be manipulative, I can tell. I do it too. <laughs> There's some really cool dialogue with the doggy. True warrior and worthy of respect. <laughs> Trying to way find a way through the earth, are we? <laughs> it's going to take some time, you know. Well, good luck with that then. I don't know, I, I, I just... I should cut off. As always folks, thanks for watching. Tune in the next episode of Dragon Age. Thanks for watching everybody.